Suspense. This is the man in black. Here again to introduce Columbia's program, Suspense. Tonight, in one of her rare radio appearances, we bring you one of Hollywood's most idolized personalities, Mr. Dolores Costello. With such noteworthy and distinguished players as Mr. Martin Cosling, Mr. George Zuko, and Mr. Ian Wolfe, Miss Costello appears in a story of today, played against the background of the new order in Europe, a story of an oppressed people who use strange and effective methods in dealing with their oppressors and with traitors. The story tonight is called The King's Birthday, and was written by Corporal Louis Pelletier, AUS. And with the performances of Dolores Costello as the Danish Countess Elsa, of Martin Kosleck as the Nazi Golighter, Reichmann, of George Zuko as Dr. Erickson, and of a young wolf as old Peter of Cronwald Castle, we again hope to keep you in... Suspense! They come to the castle almost every day now, the Gestapo, trying to question me. But it seems I'm very stupid. Somehow, I don't give the right answer. Perhaps it's my advanced age. When they ask me about the night of the king's birthday, I get confused. I ramble on in the fashion of old people. Gentlemen, Cronwall Castle is 300 years old. For all those years, Cronwall has been a symbol of Danish liberty. Gentlemen, the sea waves beat against the rocks of Cronwall. The sea is deep. Ah, the sea knows everything. Ask her. Stop babbling nonsense, you old fool. Answer my question. Did you know about those notes? But of course, Herr Lieutenant. Everybody in the district knows about them. The notes said Count Victor would kill himself... On the night of the king's birthday. Did you see the notes? Oh, oh, no, Herr Lieutenant. But the note said that Count Victor would kill himself because of his great shame. Uh, that I do know. And the note said the exact time. Twelve midnight. So? So you know the exact time? Yes, yes. I, I'm fond of clocks, you see. My father had a clock that told the time with a bird jumping out. The bird whistled. Like this. <laughs> That insane chopping. Uh, yes, Sir Lieutenant. I'll take care of you later. Perhaps I'll have something that will improve your memory. Stay there till I call you. Yes, Sir Lieutenant. <laughs> There's nothing the matter with my memory. I could tell them a thing or two if I wanted. I could tell them how it all happened. It began two days before the king's birthday. That was the day the new Nazi Gauleiter, Herr Rachman came to the castle to see the Countess Elsa. I was told to show him into the library. It was cold and gray, and the sea was pounding on the rocks, very angry, like it always is in November. The new Gauleiter sat by the fireplace and warmed his hands and called for a glass of brandy. And bring some soda, too, please. Yes, Herr Reitman. How soon did your mistress say she would see me? In a few minutes, Herr Reitman. You told her it was most urgent. Oh, yes, yes, I told her. She'll be with you soon. I doubt it. Most women's idea of soon is the best part of an hour. In my country, we train our women to... Uh, the brandy, Herr Reitman. Oh, thank you. Yes, in Germany we... Hmm, Courvoisier. Where did you get brandy like this? Count Victor can get many things that are forbidden to his countrymen, Herr Reitman. Count Victor's cellar is well stocked. Is it really? yes. Yes, we have meat at the castle. Nobody in Denmark has meat. Only Cronwald Castle. You're lucky. So they say. Shall I leave the brandy, sir? Yes. But you stay here a minute. Tell me, what's your name? Peter, sir. Ah, yes, Peter. You have been at Cronwald since you were a child. Sixty-three years. Am I correct? Why, why, yes. How did you... It's my business to know a lot of things, Peter. You don't approve of Count Victor, do you? It's not my place, sir, to... Three days ago, in the marketplace, you were heard to make an indiscreet remark concerning Convictor's collaboration with Berlin. I think a word very close to traitor was used. Was it, sir? What do you think? I think, Herr Reitman, uh, the fire is in need of more wood. If you'll excuse me, I'll get some. Do, by all means. 
And Peter. Yes, sir? Tell your mistress that I do not intend to spend all afternoon here. My business is urgent, and... You may tell the Countess yourself, sir. You are right. Oh, Countess Elsa, excuse me. I was just saying... You are quite all right, Mr. Watson. Sit down, please. Thank you. Peter, tell me your business is urgent. I hope I haven't kept you. Oh, not at all. My business is urgent, but as a new gaulator of this district, I might combine social pleasure with business and... Well, that's very kind of you. I had hoped that my wife, Frau uh, Reichmann... Of course. You must ask her to call sometime. Yes, I will. Although I have never had the pleasure of meeting Count Victor, it would be a great honor if you uh, may call as soon as he returns from Berlin. Certainly, Herr Reichmann. Thank you. And this urgent business? Yes, we come to that. Uh, do you mind if I smoke? Not at all. A good cigar always makes unpleasant things easier to tell. Sounds almost as if you had rehearsed that line on the way to the castle, Herr Reichmann. I did. And since it was ineffective, I'll be blunt, Countess. I prefer it. Three days ago, Countess, to be exact, on the day I arrived at Kronwald to begin my duties as a gallator of this district, I found this note on my desk. Read it, please. Count Victor of Kronwald will kill himself on the night of the king's birthday. That note was on my desk in the morning. At noon, I found this one. Read it, please. Count Victor of Kronwald will repudiate his Nazi collaborators. He will choose the night of the king's birthday for his death. I saw that first it was some crank, but the notes kept coming. Then I heard that everybody in the district believed what the notes said. In every house and shop and farm, they are saying that Count Victor is going to kill himself. You will see why I said my business was urgent. Oh, yes, yes, I see. It's not that I had the slightest fear for the Count's safety, but the writer of these notes must be found and treated with severe penalties. You have no fear for my husband's safety? Of course not. Certainly no anonymous letter writer could force the Count to take his own life. Mm, I wonder. What do you mean? You wish me to be frank with you? Naturally. You know my husband is hated by the whole countryside. What of it? The people here are too stupid to know what's good for them. Mm, perhaps. But the writer of these notes seems to be a little less than stupid. You think so? If you knew Danish history, Herr Reichman, you might agree. For hundreds of years, the night of the king's birthday has been a special occasion at Kronwald. On that night, the castle renews its pledge of loyalty to the king and to Denmark's freedom. Hmm. A very theatrical gesture. Mm, quite. But if anyone wished to remind Count Victor... If someone wished to remind the Count that he had chosen our glorious Führer for his leader. Yes. The night of the king's birthday would be, shall we say, the psychologically correct time to do it. You reason well, Countess. I know my countrymen. Evidently. I can see how these notes would inflame their imagination. If Count Victor were to take his own life as a public repudiation of his present political bond, the whole country would be stirred to its death. I see. You seem to view the possibility of your husband's death rather calmly, Countess. Like you, Herr Reichmann, I have no fear for his safety. I am only presenting the political possibility. Quite so. And since you grasp the full significance of the notes, you understand that I must take certain liberties in order to track down the writer. Liberties? Yes. I shall ask your permission to talk to Dr. Erickson. <sighs> Dr. Erickson? I'm told he lives here at the castle. Yes, but... I should like to talk with Dr. Erickson. Oh, as you wish. Peter will show you to the doctor's study. However, I My time is you... short, Countess. I understand Dr. Erickson is one of your country's able psychiatrists. I understand that Dr. Erickson is an authority on mass suggestion. His help should be invaluable. Dr. Erickson. Yes, Peter, show the gentleman in. Uh, sit down, Herr Reichman. Don't be alarmed about these mice. I'll remove them just as soon as Harvin here gets through the maze. <laughs> Watch him. He's really quite clever. I've been trying him on liver extract and... Ah, he made it. Good night, Harmon. Now, off to bed. I've been expecting you, Herr Reichman. Please sit down. Thank you. You've come to see me about the notes. Am I right? Yes, you're right, Doctor. When I first heard about them, I said to myself, the new go lighter will want my theory concerning the type of mind which would be prompted to write such notes. 
I'll tell you my theory, Herr Reichman. I don't want your theory, Doctor. I want you to answer some questions. Oh, so it's like that. And perhaps you want a sample of my handwriting, too. I'm not a fool, Doctor. That's very possible. How long have you been treating Count Victor for a certain nervous disorder? Five years. What would you say is his condition now? You've never met Count Victor, have you, Herr Reichman? No. When you talk with him, you'll see no outward signs of his malady. It manifests itself only during periods of despondency. In the last few years, I'm happy to say that these periods have been infrequent. Count Victor depends a good deal on you, doesn't he, Doctor? Perhaps I've almost cured him. In return, he's given me this laboratory and also money for my experiments. But you do have a great deal of influence on his mental processes. Yes, Sir Reichman, I do. In fact, if I had decided to, shall we say, liquidate Count Victor, I would have written the notes exactly as the people say they are written. Like all nervous people, the Count would be highly susceptible to such a mental attack. That's what you wanted me to say, isn't it? Yes. We know then where we stand. Almost. One thing more I'll ask you, Doctor. Count Victor had a brother who left Cornwall when Denmark was occupied by our troops. That brother, Christian, is now known to be working with the Danish underground. Formerly, he was one of your students at the university. Is that right? Christian was one of my most brilliant students. Do you know where he is now? No, I don't. And neither does your guest, Tarpo. That's the only thing we share in common. You're a very outspoken man, Doctor. I find it the best form of deception. Do you think it wise to try to deceive the lawful government of your country? Lawful government? You have a quaint sense of humor here, Reichman. You may not find it so quaint. Can't Victor ever remove his protection from you? He won't. When you've informed him of his impending suicide, as I presume you will, you'll see that he won't need me more than ever. You do intend to show the notes to the Count, don't you? Yes. I will present myself to His Excellency tonight on his return from Berlin. Yes, his reactions to the notes will be most interesting. Would it inconvenience you if I would be present on the occasion? Oh, not at all, Doctor. I'd be delighted. Your own reactions would be most interesting, too. Victor asks that you and Dr. Erickson come into the library now, Countess. Thank you, Peter. Are you ready, Elsa? Just a minute, sir. This is going to be difficult for you. Very. Yes? Yes? How must I think? How must I discipline my mind? I mean, in thinking of, of Victor. I don't know, Elsa. To me, Count Victor of Bronwald is no longer a man. He's become a symbol of fascism. The husband you once knew is dead. Yes. Yes, that's right. Count Victor is the new order. The man I once knew is dead. <laughs> That's what the people think, eh? They think they can kill me with words? They can't do that to me, can they, Doctor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Victor, please. Look at this childish note. Count Victor will kill himself on the night of the king's birthday. Because of his great shame, he'll... Oh, great shame them, all right. They'll see that... <coughs> <coughs> Doctor. Little the brandy, please. Yes, yes, of course, Andy. <coughs> now, you mustn't upset yourself. Who's upset? The whole thing is completely nonsensical. Completely. Of course it is. I'll care right his police have practically sought the writer of the notes, haven't they, Herr Wright? Practically, Doctor. You have nothing to worry about, Convict. You see? Doctor, tonight, if I need a sentence. Certainly, Doctor. I'll show them. I'll give them a dinner here on the night of the King's birthday. Everyone will hear about it. They'll see who's afraid. I'll give a dinner. Herr Wright, will you be my guest at dinner? With pleasure, Convict. I'll light up this whole castle like a, like a Christmas tree. And Elsa, you'll wear that gown you wore at the palace and your jewels. You understand? You'll wear all your jewels. Yeah. Yes, Victor. Kill me with words, eh? It's words there. After all, give them words. Herr Reichman, I'll make a statement to your newspapers on the night of the king's birthday. I'll stuff words down the people's throat. And there's someone in particular who'll read what I have to say. Yes. My brother Christian. I want him especially to read it. Herr Reichman, 
Have you ever seen my brother? No, Convictor. His picture was in that empty frame up there next to mine. I destroyed his picture. Oh, Victor, you're getting excited. Dr. Erickson. Yes, you're right, Elsa. Sometimes the strain of my work's too much. Dr. Erickson, you'll... You'll talk to me for a while before I go to bed, won't you? Of course. Talk to you, Convictor? Yes. The doctor has a way of calming my nerves. It's, it's slightly hypnotic, isn't that it, Doctor? You might call it that, Count Victor. Count Victor, I strongly no, advise... No, 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 It's the only thing that helps me. I just go quietly to sleep while the doctor talks. But, Count Victor... Good night, Herr Reichman. I'll expect you here for dinner on the night of the king's birthday. Of course, Count Victor. Elsa? Yes, Victor. Elsa, they... They can't hurt me with words, can they? No, no, Victor. They can't hurt me if I don't listen, can they? If I shut my ears, I'll be all right. I... I'll shut my ears. I won't listen. 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 listen. Hagal Leiter. Yes, Lieutenant? While you were out to lunch... Please tell me. It's another note. Yes, Hagal Leiter. Where did you find it this time? I... I I hesitate to... Speak up. Speak up! I found this Herr Gauleiter in the pocket of my own tunic when I was about to go on duty. Never mind the details. I found one of them under my pillow this morning. Count Victor called me and said there was one delivered with his morning paper. A farmer came in here at 8 o'clock. He found one near to his door. It has got to stop, Lieutenant. Yes, Herr Gauleiter. Just as our Führer says. If you tell a lie often enough, everybody believes it. That's true, Herr Gauleiter. Is it? Well... As the Gauleiter says... Do you believe Count Victor will kill himself? Who no, Herr Gauleiter? Neither do I. But the Countess was right about one thing. If he did kill himself after all these notes, the effect on the people would be electrifying. But you just said... That... I am talking about effects, Lieutenant. From what I have seen of the Count, he is too much of a coward to take his own life. But if someone else killed him and made it look like suicide... Yes, yes, it could be done. Uh, but how? How? I don't know. There will be four of us uh, for dinner. I have ordered 50 guards to patrol the ground. Four guards will be stationed in the dining room while we eat. No one can get near the Count. It's impossible to kill him. But in this strange country, you can't even trust the impossible. They say the castle is guarded tonight. But these soldiers, they say the Count locked himself up in his room all day writing. A message to the people, they say. They say the Gauleiter has five Gestapo men at the castle besides the soldiers. One Gestapo man is watching the food for poison. Wait a minute, Duke. Taste that wine before you bring it into the dining room. Uh, what did you say, sir? I said, taste that wine. Oh, oh taste it. Why, of course. Ah. It's very good, sir. Did you doubt its quality? Don't be insolent. All right. You take it in. Thank you, sir. And if there's any left after that food... Well, I'll take care of you, sir. <laughs> ah, more wine. Good boy, Peter. Good boy. Set it right here. We'll drink another toast to the king. Victor, I think we've got enough toast. Nonsense. This is the king's birthday, Nana. We've got to drink to the king. Oh, Peter. Yes, sir? Did they make you taste that wine before you brought it in? Yes, sir, they did. What's this? What's this about tasting wine? A simple precaution of man, Count Victor. I hope you don't mind. Mind? No, I don't mind, but you don't think that... Now, Victor, you don't get upset. No, sir, for the love of heaven, stop repeating that inane phrase. You've been saying that all through dinner. I'm not upset. Not upset. I uh, just want to know what's going on. What have I got to be upset about? Why, you're more nervous than I am. I can understand the Countess's feelings. This is the first dinner I've ever had with four soldiers observing my digestive processes. Don't you think, Harold? I must insist, Doctor, that the soldiers remain. Well, at least ask them to sit down. The fighter. Yes, Herr Gauleiter. Your men may be seated. Thank you, Herr Gauleiter. You can't hint at And, Peter, go get some wine for the soldiers. Yes, sir. Everyone will have more wine, Peter. We're going to toast the king. Uh, what time is it, Doctor? Five minutes to twelve, Count Victor. <laughs> and I'm still alive. Peter, it's five minutes to twelve and I'm still alive. Go get the wine, Peter. Yes, sir. You know, Peter, Peter tells me everything they say down at the village. People say I have five minutes to live. So, Peter tells you the village gossip. Oh, yes. 
Yes, he knows everything. It was Peter who discovered most of the notes and brought them to me. He brought you the notes? Oh, yes. And the last one said... Uh... Oh, what did it say? Victor, can't we talk about something else? Why? It's a fascinating subject. Ask the doctor. He and I discuss it for hours. Well, the doctor told me about some sect on the West Indies that disposes of an enemy by simply writing the victim's name on a piece of paper and sending it to him. Same sort of nonsense being tried on me. Isn't that your theory, Doctor? Well, uh, I... Dr. Erickson, in view of the Count's nervous condition, don't you think... Now, God, I my private life is my own affair. When you work for the Reich, Count Victor, you have no private life. I repeat, Dr. Erickson, in view of the Count's nervous disorder... As the Count's personal physician, I prescribe my own remedies. To know the truth about our old practices is the best way to guard against them. Surely you don't think that... In hiety, Herr Reichman, I saw a man die after receiving a note with his name on it. I don't explain it. I tell you a fact. <laughs> you see? It's possible. It's a fact. So I could be murdered with pen and ink. It could be done in, e in exactly three minutes. If my watch is right. Three minutes to live. Where is Peter with that wine? Oh, Victor. If you will excuse me. I have a headache. You stay here, Elsa. No one leaves this room till midnight. The Friday. Yes, Herr Gauleiter. Lock the door. Close all the windows. Yes, Herr Gauleiter. Two seasons. Yes. Yes, that's right. Bold everything. They won't come in here after me. They won't touch me. Oh, Victor, you're being absurd. I Count ask you. I think it's best to comply with Count Victor's wishes. Yes. Humanly, my dear. You'd never forgive yourself if you treated me unkindly during the last two minutes of my life. Especially since you wished me dead so many times. Victor. It's the truth, isn't it? Count Victor. Two minutes to live, Doctor. This is a good time to hear Elsa's confession. I may say a You word. may not. Well, Elsa. Uh, it's the truth, isn't it? Yes, Victor. It's the truth. I wish you were dead. I hate every minute I live under your roof. I hate the things you've become. A nasty puppet. I hate your sniveling, goose-stepping mind. Just as I loathe this fat specimen of a super race you've invited to dinner. The fighter! Now, let her finish her gala. Go on, Elsa, go on. I despise you as a man. Your countrymen despise you. Even before the Nazis came, you were planning to sell us out. All that Gronwald has fought for down through the years. All that Dane should be. A proud and free people. You sold all that for a cast-iron Nazi crow. I wish you were dead, Victor. I wish your soul were rotting in the grave that's waiting for all these <laughs> madmen of Europe. Doctor. Listen. Five o'clock. May God grant wisdom to our king and freedom to our people. May Clonvold always keep the faith. Who turned out the light? Who turned out the light? The fighter. I hear a door opening. No, hack our lighter. My hand is on the door. It is not moving. Yes. The fighter. Count Victor of Cromwell. I hear you. Who is speaking? I speak to Count Victor. He knows who speaks. Victor, this is your time. Are you ready? I am ready. Now you die like a soldier, Victor. But your name will live on. Victor, don't do it, Victor. Goodbye, Elsa. Victor! the body yet? They say the body was washed out to sea. But yesterday on the rock, we found the Count's ring wash and a handkerchief with initial V on it. They'll never find the body. Say what you will. Count Victor was a brave man to take his own life. Yes. He showed those Nazis that Dane could die for honor. You know what the Nazis say? They say someone forced the Count to kill him. How could you force him? That's what the Nazis say. Listen, they've arrested old Peter. They're trying to make old Peter talk. <laughs> Peter won't talk. But if he did... I bet he could tell them a thing or two. Yes, I could tell them a thing or two. I could tell them why they'll never find Count Victor's body. You know why? Because Count Victor didn't jump out of the window. How could he? Count Victor was dead six days before the king's birthday. 
No, I didn't kill him. He was shot through the head by his own brother, Christian, the night he came home unexpectedly from Berlin, six days before the king's birthday. Yes, I worked with the underground, and so did the countess and Dr. Erickson. That's why Christian came here to see us. When the count returned unexpectedly, Christian decided to try to reason with him. They quarreled and, well, Christian eliminated the slimiest traitor Denmark has ever known. It was then that Dr. Erickson got the idea for the note. Christian, we've got a fire. This new colite has never seen Count Victor. You pose as the count and you'll save your suicide. The moral effect on the people will be tremendous. Christian agreed and we started sending the notes. The rest was easy. We all played our part and Dr. Erickson coached us on the exact thing to do at 12 midnight. At the last of 12, Peter will turn out the lights from downstairs. You've got that, Peter? Yes, Doctor. Then what do you do? I go through the passageway that leads to the hidden door in the dining room fireplace. I open the door and call out, Count Victor, this is your time. Are you ready? And you, Christian? I say, I am ready. I call out, don't do it, Victor. Don't. Then I break one of the windows. And you, Christian? I uh, go through the fireplace door and disappear. Yes. And Count Victor of Franwald has died for his country. Well, that's how it was done. We planned it well, even to the putting of Count Victor's wristwatch and handkerchief on the rock where the Nazis would find them. Presently, the Gauleiter will question me some more. But soon... Soon there will be a note on his desk, and I can hear him say, Sergeant, Sergeant, how did this note get on my desk? A note? I don't know, Herr Garletta. What does it say? Says, says, remember the night of the king's birthday. Your turn is next, Herr Garletta. Your turn is next. The King's Birthday, starring Dolores Costello with Martin Kozlek, George Zuko, and Ian Wolfe. Tonight's tale of... Suspense. The producer of these broadcasts is William Spear, who with Ted Bliss, director, Lud Gluskin and Lucien Marowick, conductor and composer, and Corporal Louis Pelletier, radio author, collaborated on tonight's Suspense. This is your narrator, the man in black, who conveys to you Columbia's invitation to spend this half hour in suspense with us again next week. Suspense will be heard at a new time, Thursdays at 7.30 Pacific War Time. Perhaps you will want to note this time. Suspense will be heard on Thursdays, beginning next Thursday at 7.30 Pacific War Time, and our play next Thursday will be The Singing Walls.